Hi everybody, how you doing? I'm Pav, the Rising VTuber and an artist, and today we're going to be finishing up the fan art that we started for Common Rider. So last we left off, we were... Where in the Lord's name is my tablet? Then? Here we go. There we go. Hang on, I'll be right back. I'm sorry to hop out just after I've started, but I'll be right back. Okay, we good? We good. All right. Anyway, as I was mentioning, we were just kind of getting started on shading for the Common Rider mask and all well, the rest of him too. Let's get started then. Uh, are we on the right layer? Yeah, we're on the right layer. It's awesome seeing like just the difference between the unshaded and the shaded sometimes. I really am a fan of like the before and after on these. I don't know, there's something very special about them. Mm. Although I do wonder just exactly how I should approach this, because I, I obviously, like, oh, there's a little bit of a gap there. That can't be right. Right, because obviously we decided that the light source is like coming down from behind him, right? So that's going to add like a surprising kind of like twist to it on account of the fact that one, we need to figure out ju just how that would like affect such a round helmet, right? Because I don't know, I feel like hmm. Just the kind of curvature of the helmet would create a very strange shape for the shadow it would produce. Hi, Bunny. Yeah. Thankfully, this time around, it's mainly like very gentle colors. Like, I'm trying to, I'm used to doing like very exaggerated kind of um, changes in the uh, color palette, right? I'm like, usually when I, the way I learned, right? The way I taught myself how to color is that when we have a, hang on. Oh, actually, this is a good opportunity because then we can use a little bit here to kind of like expand the shadow. Oh yes, okay. That being said, we would still make this like further, further up. But yeah, I'm more used to doing like very extreme changes in the color palette whenever like a shadow is cast, right? Because usually the way I would do it is that if I had like this green here, right, I would almost like dip into the like directly into the blue. And that works, but I feel like having it just be a little bit closer to the original is also good. I wonder if we can like make the kind of like tear streaks here. The tear marks kind of just pure black. We'd lose a little bit of the detail, but I think that's fine because it's just going to be stylized. I could also start like just hang on. Where there would be very limited amounts of light, like right here on this like nose bit. Is it fair to call this a nose? <laughs> Is this a nose? I don't know. I don't know, like, I'm not super up to date on my entomology, right? So I don't know if I'm using the right term. Like, this is supposed to be based on, like, a bug, right? So I don't know if, like, nose would be... It's probably not the right term. No nose Joe. He's just like me for real. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you've got your no-nose no Joes, your no-neck chumps, your, uh, hmm. Actually, I'm both of those still. 
Do I have a neck? I feel like I don't have a neck. I feel like I would know if I had a neck. Yeah, we can just do a little bit of like a dotted line here. We could probably also do a little bit of a gradient right here. I'll try to do some cross hatching though. That looks just a little bit more elegant, you know, than just a plain gradient. Hmm. I don't know, does this look too evil? <laughs> That's not usually a concern I have, but like... No, that's not right. Alright, maybe if I use like the soft arrays, just like at the borders here. Uh, no. No. However, okay, so here's an idea though. Gonna grab the blend tool. Just gonna mix these two together to make to see if there isn't like a very dark green that I could use instead of like just pure black. It's a little desaturated. I'm gonna like bump up the saturate. Mm, no, 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 no. We need something different. Okay, getting warmer, getting, oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think we found it like the little Goldilocks zone. Okay, yeah, that, I, I feel like that works a little bit better, just a, just a little bit. You can add a little bit of a thing here to differentiate it a little bit from the rest as well. Yeah, I think I think lasso selection is gonna make this a lot easier. All right, let's see. Maybe maybe I just kind of blend all the shades together. Hmm. Did that do anything? I feel like it did something. Not sure if I like it though. We'll just keep working at it. We do need to be careful to like not accidentally completely unshade everything though. With the way we're blending things together here. Oh, actually, you know what? I've got an idea. Select color gamut. All right. What we're going to do is right around this part with the eyes. Going to grab them, put it over the shading layer. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Really give it the business with the Gaussian blur. And then, okay, which one would be good for the blending mode? Lighten, screen, glow. 
Hmm. Oh, this is this is a creepy kind of look with like the completely white eyes. I could just like make it the normal amount, yeah. Hang on. Uh, refer to editing layer only. Okay, so we're going to take it away from like this section over here. So, the, so that it doesn't really interrupt the background too much. Then, okay, so like right here, we're gonna take it away. Right here, right here. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that adds quite a bit to it. Is there anything that we can do with the blending mode? Oh, wait, hang on. I've got an idea. Uh, color gamut, this part again. Okay, and then with the rough eraser, we'll just get rid of the part that's like over the red already. And now we can manipulate it a little bit more freely. Can we like increase the saturation a little bit? Okay, that looks good. Then we can use the soft eraser right here to kind of like more gently blend in this part here. And then art eraser just kind of like sculpt the area right here. Okay, that should be good. We can turn those off for the time being. Yeah, yeah maybe even a little bit further on. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then with the antenna here. I will not lie. I'm actually a very big fan of the antenna. I, I really like it as like a design element, just having those little antenna. Okay, let's see. The middle pen should work for good for this. Increase the brush size a little bit. There we go. There we go. Expand that just by one pixel and then just erase this part right here. Hmm. Can I make the area in like this green part? Hang on. What color gamma? The, I need to uh, increase the error of margin color. Okay, this works. Increase the luminosity just a little bit.
Okay. And then we can just do a little bit of soft erasing towards the end here. Yeah, okay, that's looking good. I wonder if I can do the same thing for the uh, scarf here. Yeah, that's a little better. A little bit more contrast. Oh yeah, this scarf reminds me. I read this article about like a woman who's been doing these spiral hot dogs, right? Like when you're cooking hot dogs, before she throws them on the grill or whatever, right? She uses a knife to very gently cut them into spiral shapes, so that they're 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 kind of like a they look a little bit like a fixed tail after that, right? Now, apparently, it has all kinds of weird benefits that it can have. Like you know, it cooks, it caramelizes a little bit better. It um cooks a little bit faster obviously you get more surface area for additional sausage it occurs to me that i said sausage as in like the ability to apply sauce to the hot dog but it occurs to me that like saying that in the same phrase as hot dog it's a it's very phonetically similar to the word sausage hmm. Maybe that's one of those happy accidents I keep hearing about. You know how, like, um, in, sometimes in, like, different languages, you'll accidentally make a pun without really intending to? Let's see. I feel like that happened. Oh, right, I remember now. I, um, I have the line art on a separate layer. It's so weird not having the line art on, like, an actual vector layer. I feel like that... I feel like I haven't felt the consequences of that just yet, but I will soon. Okay. Oh, although today I did learn the word, where the word trepanation comes from. So I was very familiar with trepanation, the word. I don't remember where I'd heard it before, but I do know that it meant like some kind of whole procedure, right? Like, let me look that up, look, look it up. Trepanation. Yeah, so that so that's when they make a tiny little hole in one of your bones, usually the skull, to you know get in there. And I didn't know that the word trepanation actually came from the tool used to do this, which is called a trepane, which is something I need, learned today. Man, I am so glad that like medicine is at the point where it is now. If I if I'd have gotten sick in like medieval times, I would have just died. <laughs> Straight up, but like seeing some of the medical procedures available at the time, I would have been like, nah, I choose I choose death. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Brother, I'll just die. <laughs> but you know, it's because of those weird procedures that we have the medical knowledge we have today. I'm glad I didn't have to go through them, but I'm grateful for the people who, um, you know, did 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 take the bull, did take both the probably proverbial and very likely literal bullet for medical knowledge. I remember there was this one dude. Um, I forget his name. His whole thing was that like he was shot or like he had an accident at some point that resulted in him having just a hole in his torso which from which you could access his intestinal tract and this dude was basically he was not treated very well by like the main doctor that quote unquote looked after him looked after him as a strong word for that what that doctor did the doctor basically studied this dude extensively like a lot of our understanding of like where Oh, and how the gastrointestinal system works 
is because of this dude and his mir- miraculous hole. But like, it was just like this one dude, this one poor man, this weird pervert of a doctor, and just like hours upon hours of research. Yeah, if I remember correctly, the guy actually asked to be like cremated or like have his funeral, have his like um, casket hidden so that after he died, like nobody would like try and uh, grab him for additional medical experiments post mortem. Which is a very sad story. I I always feel bad when I remember like just how much that dude had to go through. But again, we did learn something some valuable things from it, and well, it's a small consolation. But I hope he's resting well in heaven. Let's see. Oh yeah. Speaking of things and heaven, I learned the, I learned that apparently like the yeah, may they rest well. I did learn that apparently one of the founders of Google is currently launching an airship startup. I think it's called something like LTA. And I feel like we've learned our lessons with airships at this point. I I feel like we don't need any more dudes being like I'll do it right this time. Right, like we, I feel like broadly, broadly speaking, we understand that airships are no bueno. <laughs> yeah, apparently this one's going to use helium, which is going to to prevent any um, fire-based disasters. Helium doesn't actually burn, which is a good thing. I do know there is like a helium shortage, which it feels like a weird thing to have a shortage of. Like when I was a kid, I, I always knew that like helium or helium was just those things that you put in balloons that made your voice squeaky. I didn't realize how precious of a resource it might actually be. I think most like floaty balloons these days are filled with like some kind of other gas, which is you know, frankly speaking, unlikely to be healthy to breathe in either. I know there was like some kind of like side effect of breathing in too much helium. Probably the same side effect that you would have from like breathing anything which isn't oxygen for extended periods of time. Yeah, it's yeah. I still can't get over the fact that like helium is like a scarce resource to the extent that there's like a shortage. Now I'm just imagining some kind of scientist dude go, watching the movie up by, made by produced by Pixar Studios and going like, "No, you fool! We could have used that helium <laughs> in the opening act." Sounds fake, but I know it's real. <laughs> yeah, again, helium shortage doesn't feel like it's a real thing. Like it's just gas, isn't it? It's just like air. <laughs> Yeah. Come to think of it, at the end of Up, they do also get away on an airship. And that one, I don't remember that one was also powered by hydrogen, which could be (laughs) kind of a big risk, (laughs) considering that, like, neither neither the old man and definitely not the little guy accompanying him probably knew how to pilot a dirigible, unless that thing came with, like, a 500-page instructional manual. I don't know, maybe it did. I mean, hell, how how hard how hard could it be, honestly, to learn how to pilot one of those things? Definitely not as hard as piloting a plane, right? I feel like an air like an airship would be less difficult to learn how to fly than a plane. Like, you would need to be more careful for sure, because planes have have like that advantage of mo- agility, I think, or you know, more agility than like an aerostatic. Man, flying airplanes just feels like one of those, like learning how to fly an airplane just feels like one of those things that it's like a real pickle to get out of. Because one, you need somebody who's actually experienced with flying airplanes. Awesome, great, but they're usually in short supply. And two, you need someone who is not only competent at flying airplanes, but is also like comfortable sitting in an airplane with somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing. That could not be me. (laughs) 
Like, I'm sorry, but that could not be me. <laughs> Like, I'm just remembering the time my dad taught me how to drive, and, like, I'm just remembering, like, okay, yeah, one time I, I pushed on, like, the gas instead of the brake, and I I almost crashed the car. Like, that, that relatively speaking, you know, I would have been in danger, my, my father would have been in danger, but it would have been limited to, like, just us. If some dude fucks up on an airplane, a lot of people are going to be made acutely aware of it. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I was talking about the guy from the Google founder, one of the one of the founders of Google who does this airship thing. I remember that Google had like some kind of like stratospheric balloon as well. I think they were trying to like spread Wi-Fi with it. I think it was called something like Project Loon. That one was actually kind of cool. I, I, I like the idea of like a stratospheric air balloon. Sadly, not for, like, air, hot air balloon rides. Y you know, the stratosphere is a very un un inhospitable place, from what I understand it. From my limited understanding of meteorology, the stratosphere isn't exactly a place you want to be at. Yeah, I feel like most things that like involve some kind of like satellite or like something being really high up in the air are like are kind of eyesores, right? So Starlink, for example, those those like Wi-Fi satellite things, I feel like those are a little bit of an eyesore. I I remember there being like an actual like legit concern that we're sending up too many satellites into space because you know eventually one of those days. A few of those are going to come down, and we don't know exactly where they're going to come down. You know, the plan is to keep them up, but, like, at the same time, there's only so much space up near... You know, there's not exactly a whole lot of elbow room in terms of, like, just how... In, just like, in terms of, like, places that are good to fly in. Mm. Well, 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 we'll burn that bridge when we cross it, I figure. The neat thing about satellites is that, at the very least, because they are very closely monitored, you'll have a really good window of time to prepare in case they do start coming down. You know, if that's the case, we, you can probably mobilize a lot of different solutions. There is that phrase, right? Everything that goes up must come down at some point. I wonder if those people also predicted what would have to happen to satellites. It's so funny to think that like 90% of the modern technology that we have these days would have been like something that, that a stoner would have thought of like 40 years ago. He's like, we're going to be connected, man. It's going to be beautiful. We'll, ha we'll have like a web website with a little blue bird. And we'll have another one that looks like a little T. And, you know, the other guys at the table are going to be like, Joe, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, okay, good. We do have a little bit of, um, hang on. Let me darken this a little more. Shuffle this around a little. But yeah, Project Loon, though. All right, weird thing, right? There's there's supposed to be like this one method of like kind of uh, suppressing the effects of climate change. I learned about I learned about it in science class one time. Um, it's called like something like stratospheric aerosol injection. The idea is 
people noticed a long, long time ago that when an, when a volcano exploded, the ash particulates that it sent into the stratosphere actually like cooled down the earth a little bit because a lot of that was sulfur which reflected back some of the sunlight that would have otherwise been absorbed into the earth by the greenhouse gases so some brain genius was like hey i bet we could manufacture that for like anti-global warming purposes and he was right you can't actually do that but the problem is that like sending sulfur into the atmosphere willy-nilly is kind of a bad idea Sending anything into the stratosphere, generally speaking, is kind of a bad idea because you don't know how it'll react. Sulfur is just one of the candidates, and you know it's kind of the main candidate candidate on account of the fact that like we have like natural occurring, naturally occurring, what do you call it, like um, examples of it working right with the volcanoes. Yeah, I think they also tried out. Well, they didn't try out anything, but they have like, you know, some of the some of the ideas is are to use like salt, which I think would be like the least harmful. But the thing is, like, the, the, this is no matter what going to include the disclaimer of least harmful, right? Like, I feel like there isn't one of these ideas about like something we can t shoot into the atmosphere or stratosphere actually that is like truly perfect and you know that's the case for a lot of things but i feel like with something as precious as the as the stratosphere we should not be dicking around with it too lightly <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay, I've got an idea. Just kind of like squeezing this here. There we go. Okay, bring that around here. I used to get really easily frustrated by like clusters of lines like this, right? Uh, and that was before I started, I got used to like painting with anti-alias tools, but now I kind of like them because now I can just kind of like do what I need to do behind the scenes there and then just like refill them once I'm done. It's very convenient. Okay, there we go, and then like that, and then like that. Okay. No, that's not quite right. Are you participating in Art Fight this year? Yes, I... Oh, fuck. Art Fight is in, like, 20 days. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about Art Fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. I don't think any of my character profiles need, like, super, super intricate amounts of fine-tuning. I could probably get that done in, like, a weekend. <laughs> I forgot Art Fight was real. But, yes, I will be participating in it. I'll probably do something similar to like last year where I choose like both both like people I know and like a few random folks to attack. That's gonna be fun though. I always feel like the artist community really like thrives in art fight season. 
you know, we're like, oh, I want to get some attacks and I want to get some attacks. And we, I feel like it's like when we're united in a singular purpose. Or rather, like, we're all kind of like on the same page about like what we're doing. Not a whole, I don't know how many people, relatively speaking, have participated in art fight. A lot of the people that I know who do art do do art fight. But uh, hang on. No, wait, hang on. We can do this a little bit better. Okay, then just reaching down to around here. There we go. Okay, we'll do it like this. Hmm. I don't know. I do have a lot of fun with Art Fight. I, I'm always happy to participate in it. May that may that's kind of like painting my own perception of it, right? There are definitely people who I think will probably be too busy to participate, but I always think it's a good opportunity. It is also very funny because I, I end up rewriting my character's lore like at least three times I, I swear every single time that i've like done art fight i feel like i've changed my character's lore another time which is fine you know it, it's my house so to speak i just think it's funny Okay, and then we'll just select the area here. Probably the needed eraser would probably be best. No, no, that doesn't look quite right. Oh yeah. Oh, I did see that you were participating, though, Bunny. Good luck to you. I really like your character designs. They're always super... Like, they're they're very... I'm trying to find the right words to describe it, right? Like, they have this kind of, like, cool... Your style is really distinctive. I think that's what, that's what really helps a lot with them. You, ha you have a really good way with colors. Let's see... Okay, there we go. And now that thin strip of light won't cut it. Unless, hang on. Mm, let's just see how, okay, let's do like a light version of this and see how that goes. Mm, no, not quite. Maybe with a brush. I think the brush might help. Artifact makes me remember, oh shoot, this character still doesn't have a name. <laughs> yeah. For a lot of mine, I realized that like I gave them like something that they're supposed to represent and like their fighting style, but I don't remember like, okay, but what do they actually like like and dislike? <laughs> Oop, hang on. Wait, I think I'm gonna crack the code. All right, we're, we're gonna use a soft eraser. And then with the brush. Hmm. 
Okay. Okay, and then I'm wondering if I can't use like one of the darker helmet tones for like the inside of the chest plate here. Oh yeah, I learned that apparently there was a family in California who's selling like 10 million pennies. They found, apparently one of their relatives recently passed away, something like that. They they found a huge, huge load of pennies in like the crawl space in, one, in their house. And, you know, they realized, hey, this is this looks to be pretty some pretty old coins. I bet there's going to be some very valuable ones in here. But instead of like looking through it themselves... They're basically selling the back the like truckload of coins, the ten million or so coins, to as like a whole thing. Like essentially, they're hoping to pass on the work and just selling the coins at like twice their face value, which is like twenty five grand. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> like I I completely understand their situation. If I found myself with ten million pennies. I would also not want to sort through them myself. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was a kid, my parents put me to work sometimes by like sorting out uh, like the different coins and figuring out how much we have in change exactly. I don't think we need to do that. These days, you know, I don't think that's a real kind of like thing you need to do. It's a very cashless society that we live in nowadays. Counting out change is still useful though. I still have like a little uh satchel bag full of coins of different denominations just in case. I usually use them for bus fare. Yeah. I wish the bus fare was one, cheaper, and two, an even number of dollars so that if I just needed to, I could just like drop two dollars into the bus into the bus thing because like right now it's like 275 I think. And that's like a really dumb number for, into count out and spare change because you you need either a two dollar coin a toonie or two one dollar coins plus at least plus like three quarters. So in total, you're carrying a minimum of like four coins. And I don't know. That just seems messed up. I feel like that's not very convenient. When I learned that apparently Canadians call their $2 coin the toonie, I'm like, you cannot be serious. That's not a real word. This is not a real currency. But no, it is. That's just kind of like how they do. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me that, like, for some reason, there's, like, two ways to pronounce, like, the denomination of money in Chinese. Like, there's a renminbi, which is the... I think like official name of it. And then there's Yuan, which is like the like name of the, like, you know, you, you have Chinese Yuan, which is the name of the currency itself. But on the stock exchange, it's RMB, which is where the RMB name came from. You can also call them Kwai, I think, which is like, it's kind of like the equivalent of calling like dollars, bucks or something. So like saying like, Hey, can I have two bucks? You'd be saying like, Hey, can I have two Kwai? I feel like more countries need like that equivalence, you know, like I'm sure there's like different slang and innuendo that you can use to like figure to like state like, hey, we're this is like money, right? For rather inconspicuous words. But I feel like none of them have quite the same kind of like greasy feel mouthfeel to them as Buck does. I feel like Buck is was made to be used by like Italian mobsters or something. I don't know. There, there's something like very greasy about the mouthfeel of the word buck. I used to have a lot of pro problems as a kid figuring out what somebody meant by 10 grand. 
Because I'm like, even a single dollar is grand, in my opinion. <laughs> I didn't understand that it meant like a thousand until much later. There we go. I kind of like how that looks. It reminds me a little bit of like a tree branch. Okay, we'll paint this part next. The belt I'm actually kind of dreading to paint. Like, it's going to take a while, I think. I think I'll probably do the belt last then. I feel like after I finish the belt, I'll be kind of wiped. It might take not that long, though, as well. There's multiple possibilities. Okay. Then over here. And then the pants. I think I, I think after that it's, it'll only be the gloves and the um, belt. Yeah. And then of course a lot of color gradient mixing so that we can kind of bring it all together. Okay. And kind of like this. And then Oh, actually, yeah, okay, this would kind of like fall like that, I think, because of the fact, because of the ambient occlusion a little bit. Okay, sure. A little bit for the knee here. This was the knee, right? Yeah, it was. Okay, there we go. And here we go. Okay, kind of like this. There we go. That should be good enough for like the shape of the hands or the arms. Yeah, that's a good thing about this is that because like he's um he's just kind of like falling vertically, it's not that hard to figure out where the shading is. Yeah, that's been my favorite part about this piece, I think. There we 
we go. Oh yeah, actually, Bunny, if you're if you're still around and you and you're filling up the talking, I did have a question for you. So, at one of these game show, game expositions that they've been showing recently, they showed off this like very Sims like video game, and I was wondering like if there was like a an alternative to like the Sim, the Sims, and it also had like tools and such for content creation. Do you think it would like stand a chance, or do you think like people would stick the Sims? Because I do wonder if, like, if there is some degree of like brand loyalty or something. Because I imagine that, like, if if somebody's been playing The Sims for a long, long time, they would have like a lot of feelings about the series and like would have some attachment to the setting. Yeah, because like the, during the game exposition, they these guys were really emphasizing, oh yeah, we're gonna be like very friendly toward like content content creators. We're gonna be we're gonna try and give them the tools to essentially make the game theirs. So I was wondering if that was like at all appealing to people, because it seems like an interesting concept. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm going to suppress a little bit the shading on the armor right around here. Let's see. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, that's weird looking. Hmm. Yeah, for for me, I actually really enjoy simulation games for the most part. There's something very soothing about them. But I think the one kind of simulation game that like always makes me super nervous is like city simulation, right? Like, I'm not a huge fan of games where like pe people like get mad at me, and I feel like city simulation games is like everybody ge getting mad at you out all the time. Because your town is so sucks. Hell, I felt like I I always felt like really pressured to play like Animal Crossing, right? Like I felt pressure while I tried to play Animal Crossing. I I'm not a huge Animal Crossing guy, right? But I didn't. I felt like a lot of a surprising and probably unintended degree of pressure because I always felt like if I let any of these little animals down, they would like I don't know, they and they would like put me in the stocks in the middle of the street. <laughs> I believe that some of them. I believe that some of them would do it. I see the look in their eyes. They're bloodthirsty little critters. Hmm. Villagers will love you. Aww. That's nice to know. Oh, yeah. And that being said, I do remember seeing like some screen captures of like the original GameCube one. Like right now, it's very it's a very gentle game, but I remember seeing some screen caps of like the <laughs> GameCube version where the villagers were like surprisingly mean. <laughs> I don't know if those were doctored at all. They might have been. I always find it really funny. To be fair, I think now I would find it I would find it much funnier if like one of the villagers got mad at me. Like you you are like a little dude. You're like a little creature. You have so much rage in your tiny little body. <laughs> like it, it's like when you see like one of those chihuahuas that are so angry that like they're shaking or something. 
You know, it's like, I understand that you're stressed out, little guy, but you have to understand that, like, you're not going to do anything to me. <laughs> I wonder if that's also the case. I tried to play one of those Rune Factory games. One time my power went out for, like, almost, like, 48 hours. And to pass the time, I used to, I played the, I played Rune Factory 3, I think, on my DS. It was kind of fun. Like, I, I, I had fun with that game. I don't know if I'll ever actually pick it back up because I feel like my interest with that game died the moment my power came back. It's weird. I had fun with it, but I feel like I need to be in a certain space of mind now to participate in it. I need to wait for another blackout to happen and then I can really indulge myself with that game. Oh, I think this might be something, actually. Hang on. I I think I'm onto something with this. Yeah, okay. And like this, here we go. No, that doesn't look right. I'll just make this a solid block of color, I think. Yeah, okay. Down like this. Okay, I am now more co confident in this scarf than I was before. Hmm. No, I do think like the shadow would drop here. There might be like a little bit of a gap here, just a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we did the gloves. I think now the only thing left left is a belt. I'm gonna stretch my wrists real quick. Oh, very crunchy. And I'm still thinking about those, like, 10 million pennies. First of all, I forget how much a penny is, right? I remember dime is 10 cents because, you know, they both started with, the, with like, dime, diez, deci, as in, like, the denomination. Like, it, it makes sense. Pennies, is penny, like, a single one? Is like, I thought a penny was, like, a five, like, five cents.
I see United States. Okay, no, one cent is a penny. Okay. How much is five cents then? Five cent denomination. A nickel, right, okay. Okay, we got pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Then, is there like a word for a 50 cent coin? How much, or is it just quarters, 50 cent coin? Okay, half dollar. Probably should have seen that coming. <laughs> I didn't remember that silver that um there were like one dollar coins called silver dollars. Okay, then like this okay this middle strap is going to like cast a shadow right here but after that we'll have like the this kind of like cross hatching effect and with a little bit like around here yeah in spanish we call it like the, our word for like bucks, I was talking about like the different ways you can like use slang for money earlier. I remember in at least my home country or at least among my family, we we can call we call like um, our kind of like little metaphor for for dollars is um, latas, which means like cans. I have not done a very good job filling these little lines out here. It's probably because they're on the gray side, right? I feel I feel like the ones that are on the gray side are usually more difficult for me to color in more carefully, on account of the fact that they blend in with the background that I use most of the time. It's only when it's like bright like this that I really realize that I've missed some spots. Man, the funniest thing happened at work today. So I'm not sure if they know that I've been invited to it. Um, my, the, the way that like, so I'm, I, I'm in this group chat that is for like an office that isn't mine necessarily. Like I, I was helping out a team from another office and they invited me to the group chat for that team. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, Chris. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? I'm Pabs, the Rising VTuber and Artist. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for your hard work. What are you up to? Hang on. Slash shout out at Acreus. What are y'all doing? Let's see. Oh, Armored Core 2. Nice. Oh, are you, are you playing the series like in anticipation of the new game? That sounds awesome. I know a lot of people are huge, huge fans of Armored Core. I feel like a lot of... I don't feel like there's any FromSoft game that doesn't have its fans. You know, you, ha you, have, you have the... Um, you have like the, the King's Field one. You have like um, the Armored Core series. There's a lot of different games that they've made that have a lot of really devout following so it's always cool to see like people trying to experience those trying to get through it all before six nice yeah yeah i, th I think you were also playing yakuza kawami the other day how's that going i'm going through ishin myself like it's 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 a really different experience from like the regular yakuza titles but i feel like i'm having a lot of fun with it but yeah i'm glad you were able to stop by and i'm glad that you had a good time with it
That's good too. I lo really love all the changes to styles in Kiwami, especially. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> I remember that. I remember I watched this other this dude try to like play a segment of Kiwami Two. I think I don't remember. I think in Kiwami One they still use the Yakuza Zero engine. In Kiwami Two they started using the Dragon engine. I think, which is the one that they use for like Song of Life and everything, like I, Yakuza Six, right? And the problem, and the well, problem I say, the one of the features of that engine is that it, is that the physics collision with it is really wonky. So what ends up happening is that this dude just kept running into like different shelves and different random things in the overworld, and because he just keeps running into them, and eventually they just like break into confetti. It was really good. <laughs> But yeah, I remember in Kiwami, particularly because it was like the first title they ever developed, for some reason, like 80% of the sub stories are like, Kiryu almost gets scammed, part 99. <laughs> I th I think it's like done in part to like establish Kamurocho as being like super grimy, but like I do find it so funny that like so many different people are trying to run the different different grips on the same dude. <laughs> Kiryu must have like the f one of the faces of all time, really, because like not only is it kind of like one of those faces that's like oh delinquents are gonna want think that I want to fight me, but it's also somehow a face that it like. You know, two two time or two bit gangsters look at it and are like, "Yeah, I could scam this dude. This dude looks like I could scam him." <laughs> That's always been really funny to me. <laughs> Nobody wants to mess with Kiryu, but every well, no, lots of people want to mess with Kiryu, and somehow he's also seen as like a really easy mark. I don't know too much about cons, but I'm pretty sure one of the main rules is that you shouldn't try to con somebody you can't fight off yourself. Or somebody you're not confident you can outrun. <laughs> yeah. There is, an, there is like an ancient Chinese... Well, ancient relatively, right? Like, it's, it's, it's technically fairly recent. There's this thing called like the Book of Swindles, which is which was meant to be like this guide for middle class merchants in one of the dynasties. I don't remember which one, but basically, a, commerce had really started booming, right? So this dude made a small guide of like the different potential swindles that you could get involved in because of your own carelessness or because you didn't like scrutinize a customer enough, right? Like for example, one time they were talking about this dude who was selling a horse. And accidentally got roped into basically acting as a voucher for this one dude trying to steal a bolt of fabric. But the funniest part of it is, like, it's supposed to be an anti-scam guidebook. But because the dude goes into so much detail about how each scam was perpetrated and what to look out for, it also serves almost as like an instructional manual for how to run your own grifts. It was like the it was like the ancient Chinese equivalent of of like how to grift for dummies, <laughs> which I find really funny. I think like a lot of the scams from back in the day wouldn't work, but some of them are uh, do still feel like they're they're like something you would have heard like your cousin talk about, right? Like they your cousin would be like, "Oh man, you know, I got scammed out of like a hundred bucks the other day," and you're like, "Huh? How did that happen?" And like they almost like word for word recount something that happened to them. They say that you can really feel connections with other generations through historical texts, but I don't feel like I, that one that one was supposed to be the intended effect. Okay, there we go.
And okay, then this part here is going to also have a little bit of a shadow cast. Yeah, I've been thinking, I keep thinking and going back to that trailer for that they've done for like the eighth entry, right? Infinite Wealth. The fact that it, that it's apparently in Hawaii. I do wonder how that's going to affect the series at all. Particularly in like how, how they are going to explain like Ichiban being able to like speak English easily with like the people that he's around. Because like I feel like Ichiban probably didn't study that hard on like english pronunciation and stuff in school i don't know i could be mistaken he could he could be like a polyglot for all i know i don't know i feel like it's always the people you least expect to be like multilingual to, to be like extremely versatile in like six different languages i feel like that's one of those skills where it's like very difficult to like read on whether someone whether or not someone has it which makes sense you know it's not like it's something that comes up in everyday conversation unless you live in a foreign country Yeah, when I was a kid, I really wanted to learn different languages. But once I realized just how hard it was and how little I got back from it, I kind of, I very quickly dropped off. I am Duolingo's weakest warrior. And remember when there was like a whole thing about like the Duolingo owl being like a terrifying eldritch being? I feel like we very quickly forget about like how how quickly that happened. <laughs> Mood. <laughs> like well, am I crazy or was there like a time period where like the Duolingo team like leaned into that perspective for their owl character? I don't know. There's something very untrustworthy about that little green fella. I mean, then again, you could say the same of me. <laughs> but I'm more like a little fella in green rather than a little green fella. Okay, then like this. There we go. I feel like the word eldritch gets tossed around a lot these days. You know, like what? It's just kind of like a shorthand for thing that isn't normal or like thing that isn't supposed to be like in the nature of Earth, right? Which I think is a very good use of it. I feel like that's very versatile already. I don't know. I feel like we need to bring back the word creepy a little bit. Eldritch feels like it, it imparts like an unnecessary degree of gravitas to a lot of things. But then my issue with it, with this is that like it almost feels like I'm gatekeeping Eldritch, right? I I, I feel like there there was this one English professor I had right in like second grade, third grade, what have you, and he was like, "Don't use the word awesome. It, it, like the it's supposed to be for like awe inspiring things." Well, maybe this weird, this sa really good sandwich I'm eating is all inspiring, huh? You ever think about that? Yeah, I haven't had a whole lot of professors or teachers who are like sour pusses for the sake of being a sour puss. You know, like I feel like you see those around sometimes where they are like really like cynical. 
out of like some kind of like world where uh, need to feel like world wary, right? And it does. It sometimes it works. So, you know, sometimes they can play it off pretty well. But like a, a lot of the a lot of the times, I find that it just makes them kind of mean and cynical. And of course, it, it, this can also go for like some people's like sense of humor. You know, in in general, like being super cynical is something that's very difficult to kind of like pull off in like a non off putting way. Which I think is for the best. I, I, I feel like if everybody tried to be cynical all the time, it would be kind of exhausting. So I'm glad that it, like it, there is like a skill gate to being cynical. <laughs> you know, that doesn't stop a lot of people, but it does stop a few of them. Okay, then right around here. Whoa, what? what? <laughs> Where am I going? <laughs> I just got catapulted away from my canvas. Maybe that's CSP trying to tell me that I should lean back further in my chair. You know, really take it easy. Yeah. To this day, the funniest sign that some dude has gotten serious is like when they usually like have like a very sloppy sitting style in their chair, but like then they something gets their attention, and they suddenly kind of like their posture improves noticeably. <laughs> That's always been really funny to me. To be fair, I also do that. I, I feel like when now when I get more serious, I feel like I go more I shrimp harder. You know, when I when I feel when I feel nervous or like I feel like I need to to be like at my peak, I, I do kind of like get more tense. Yeah. Usually kind of in my shoulders. I, th I think like I hold a lot of tension in my shoulders when I'm nervous. Or like in my, like I just like grip my hands really hard. They're not good habits, but they are mine. Okay, let's see. There we go. Now I gotta fix the shading a little bit. No, something about this ain't right. Hang on. Let me use the liquify tool a little bit and move, shift this downward. There we go. Okay, grab this. There we go. Okay, darken this. Yeah, just kind of across the board, I think. Darken this part too. Okay. Yeah, I think this is going to work.
Okay, cool. And now to work on the sh rendering for the belt itself, I think. And the metal studs here and there. The good news is we already have some stuff to work off of there. So, okay, I think the best thing to do would be to... Okay, kind of like this. Now, I, I need to like push it in even further. There we go. Yeah, ditto over here. This one's just going to be fully shaded. Okay, we'll have a little bit of shading on the side here to give it some depth. There we go. Here we go. Okay. And the and on the edge of it here. We're going to I'm going to need like a slightly darker shading color as well to kind of like do the area here. Yeah, like that. Just a little bit of extra service for the bolts. And a little bit of a highlight. Yeah, okay. We can do something a little bit similar with like the very, very borders of this part. Okay, there we go. I'm going to do the buckles on the other side first because I don't want to tackle the actual belt itself, just the like central part of the belt just yet. But yeah, I feel like I was really on the money with my estimate that the belt would be what took the longest. It does have all these extra little details that the other parts lack, or that would be obscured by the shadows. Okay. And this part here. There we go. Okay, then using the white tone from back here, or the clearer tone rather. And you know what I haven't done in a while that I should probably do one of these days? An eye mask. That'll feel nice. I remember I originally got one because I had like one of those like uh, styes, right? 
But I, after that, I kept like wearing it from time to time because it just did feel very nice on my skin. You know, a little bit of self-care right now and again, it ain't bad. Hmm. I, I feel like self-care is one of those things that has kind of like been eroded by it's just like overuse, right? Like a lot of things, eating is self-care, for example. You could very, you could, you could very well argue that like it's the purest form of self-care there is because if you eat, you can keep on living. But you know, a little bit of like me time, right? A little bit of relaxation, a little bit of um, hmm, I put this like a little, like a touch of indulgence, just a little bit of an indulgence. Yeah. Sincerely, I think sometimes you do you do just need to be like incredibly self-indulgent, right? Like you just need to really lay lay into the things that you enjoy. Every once in a while, you know, and sometimes regularly, it is healthy to do that. Because I feel like it reminds you that like it's not necessary like you need to give yourself permission to do these things. Because I feel like all too often we get too caught up in like, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that. We kind of forget to like remember that we have the right to have these like small moments for ourselves you know just you know like i always think to myself okay i have like these deadlines this deadline here this deadline there but like sometimes like you know what i've kind of done my work i instead of like goofing off on the internet i think i'm gonna like lie down in the sun for a little while and it rules whenever i decide to do that it's like one of the best things that i can do for myself and you know it's not like i can do that every day but I can do that sometimes and just doing it sometimes just kind of like reminds me, right? That like, you know, I got this floor time, right? Floor time is like one of those things that I feel like is an almost necessary little indulgence. Have you tried lying on your floor today? I mean, I guess not everybody's floors will be able to like have somebody on them for the time being i feel like i i feel like you should give it like a little sleep before you try it you know just to really get the mo most bang for your buck Okay, and we'll use the darker tone that we've developed here for the edges on this side. We'll we'll remove the highlights on the opposite side. I do feel it works better this way. And then we'll have just a little bit of a darker color right here. Okay. Then, like this, and then a little bit of this. And I feel like after that, we can start like doing the little cross hatching. Straight up, I think the amount of times that I've just been pushing buttons in Ishin has started to, has started to like train my wrists. I remember like yesterday after I clocked out of the Ishin stream, I actually did a couple of the dungeons before heading to bed, and it, like 
I I was like mashing buttons for so long that it, that like I actually started like my hands didn't quite cramp. They like got numb. It, it's it's like when you're like holding onto that onto something that's like vibrating for too long and like your hands start to like feel numb. Like that's how they felt. Like I had to like swing them around a little while to make sure that they were in proper working order. <laughs> Also, I I read somewhere that to get the side quest that I want to get, I need to, like, finish the battle dungeons in that game. And I really hope that, like, I can finish them in time for Saturday's stream, because otherwise it's going to be too much of a pain and I just won't bother. <laughs> I will keep it 100 with you. I am not going through, like, through, like some 20-minute dungeon to get, like, a crappy sword at the end of it, ju just so that I can, like, see one last little cutscene. <laughs> I will watch that. We will watch that shit on YouTube if it comes to that. <laughs> Valid. Thank you. Now, I do think I'll be able to do it. I, I, I've, I've been doing pretty well with them. Uh, especially as I start to get like the later game equipment that I've been missing out on because I haven't been grinding these stupid dungeons. I feel like, I feel like every time I go to those dungeons, it's like a training arc. I'm going to end up like with three shotting the final boss. <laughs> Finally, a pi the pistol will do a realistic amount of damage. <laughs> I've been waiting the game, but I've got overwhelmed by options, so I played nothing. Oof. Yeah, that that always really sucks like when you have like so many things you can do that you end up doing very little at all. Like I think that the word for like it's called like choice paralysis or something, right? Yeah. Video games are very good, is the thing. <laughs> if video games were less good, I feel like we would have a less difficult time choosing. But, like, unfortunately, despite all prognostic, video games are good. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I, I hope you get to, uh, to spend some quality time with your games soon. I don't know. Yeah, I was talking earlier about, like, moments of indulgence, right? I feel like it's a lot of the time it's like one of, it's part of the attitude is also going to have to be like, if you're going to do something wrong, do it right, right? Because, like, every single time, a lot of the times when I, like, take a break or I'm, like, resting, I'm like, I could be doing something cooler right now. You know, I could be drawing something else. I could be like watching something else. I could be doing something else. But you know, I eventually managed to like let go of that a little bit. I don't remember how, but it is important to try and like let loose a little bit to kind of avoid that choice paralysis. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. I'm not. I'm not an expert in it yet. I'm hoping to get more experience with it soon. Yeah. Like, it's very difficult for me to, like, how do I put this? So, relatively speaking, right, I can wrap up work after the day is done fairly easily because I know for a fact that, like, you know, it'll be there tomorrow. Hmm. But conversely, it's, like, much more difficult for me to, like, pack up like just surfing the web or something because like uh how do i put this like sometimes it feels like we're almost like taking taking revenge for the time we won't have in the future like some like you'll be like uh i want i should go to bed but like if i don't watch this two hour documentary about like a doom mod that you that takes inspiration from house of leaves i will never be i won't get the, another chance to like indulge in it Hmm. it's a lot like that like I, I feel like if i don't do something the moment like it strikes my fancy i'm just gonna lose it forever <laughs> yeah, very like that that's what happened with like that um rune factory game i think that like i i got into like a very specific mindset to play it and until like that fancy strikes me again it's very difficult to go back into it 
C'est la vie. Yeah. That being said, the one game that I do like make a, a surprising amount of time to play for something that I played very little on stream. I think I've played it like once on stream. There's this game called Ultra Kill, right? Which is like a very fast paced movement movement type game. And I sometimes make the time to play like one or two levels of it at a time, right? Not because I'm like a super fan of the game. But because I found like it, it like activates just the exact right neurons in my brain to kind of like get super pumped about everything. Like it's such a fast paced and tense game that like once I finish playing it, I'm like, okay, it's it's like a warm up almost. <laughs> Like it feels like I've been revving my every single time I play that game. I use so so much of my brain at once that it's like revving the engine. <laughs> I wish there were more were, there were like more games like that for me. I could try to look into like more character action games, but yeah, I, I like so far Ultra Kill served me pretty well. So I'll see I'll unless I miraculously get good at that game, unlikely because I don't try. <laughs> see the thing is, right? Not getting good at a game is generally seen as like a bad thing, right? It's like, it's like a negative. But in my case, it's an absolute positive that I don't get good at Ultra Kill. In fact, it's almost like a necessity that I don't get good at Ultra Kill because otherwise I'll stop playing it. Anyway. So this belt. Okay, expand by one pixel. Now oh, this is a weird little chunk here. I'm also realizing that I missed a couple of spots here. Just the tiniest little pixels. Weird how that works. Man, Common Rider is still responsible for like one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen where like I've I've been recently watching Common Rider build in a, a friend of ours has been like showing it to us uh, in one of the, our servers, right? Uh, v V does it right, and Common Rider build is a story about like dudes getting experimented on by the government, Natch, and at one point they're at this abandoned lab with one of the former bad guys, and they're like, "All right, listen, man, we need your scientific expertise. You're the only one who can make this sh this shit work anymore." And he's like, "Actually, no, I'm not. You see, I I was I was in charge of this lab, but I wasn't actually like a scientist myself." And they're like. But you were in charge of the lab, though. <laughs> and he immediately goes, that was just nepotism. He just straight up admits, like, yeah, no, that was nepotism. <laughs> and I still think that's some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> and one of them even goes like, holy crap, he admitted it. Oh, I am on the wrong, wrong layer. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I don't know what about that cracked me up so much. Okay. Mm 
And with the Moly Pen, this will be easier. Ooh, or maybe with the brush. I think the brush will be really useful for this. Yeah, that's looking nice. All right, let's blend that together so it looks a little better too. Yeah, the, the reason for doing it like this, right, having that little, like, kind of brush stroke in the background and then doing it like this is twofold, right? Because, like, it helps to kind of, like, blend in the rest of this, but it also helps to kind of, like, define... Mm, no, hang on. Something about this doesn't seem quite right. Maybe I need to, like, make it properly, like, a cell kind of style. Yeah, that might be it. Okay, then over here, over here, perfect. There we go. And then blending this in. I wonder if I could like, hang on, could I add a little bit of like white point to some of these parts? Maybe not these parts in particular, maybe some, maybe some of the parts around here. Nope, 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 nope. That's a no-go. It was worth a shot, though. I feel like I still learned something from that. Ooh, I like what I'm doing here. Hmm. Maybe a touch more time in the oven. We'll keep cooking. Let, let's see. Let's see what happens if we just kind of like keep going. Put this here. Wait, what if we made this? Uh, mm hmm. I don't know about that. What if? 
about instead like this. Nope, 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 nope. Then, oh, wait, no, hang on. I've got it. I've got it. I've got the idea. All right, we're going to use the soft brush, the soft erase tool. There we go. That being said, I do want to kind of like revert this to be like a rounder towards this side. Yeah, like that. That's not the right color. Let's try that again. Okay, and over here, and what we'll do, okay, first we need to increase the tolerance on the wand, select, all right, that seems good, and then what we're going to do is if we're going to grab this, we're going to use the, mm, yeah, I think the spray can might be useful for this, why did it not select this part right here, anyway, uh, okay, spray can, Then uh, maybe right around here. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I missed a spot here on the pants, I think. Might be. Oh, and then maybe hang on. I've got a I've got, got a really good idea. I'm gonna grab everything here. Gonna unselect this segment right here. And then I'm also going to kind of like give it that kind of rev the re the reverse of what's going on back here, essentially. Where is the airbrush? Here we go. Okay, like this. Yeah, I think that, that works better than the shadow that I gave it right there. Okay, then over here.
and over here. How are we for time? Ooh. Okay, coming along. I'm not worried just yet. But we should probably step on it regardless. But hey, I think with this, the belt shading is pretty much done. Now, I should probably try to do something for the wind turbine right here. Just quickly. So I'm going to like... Uh, This is going to be tricky to figure out because hang on, select color gamut, this part right here. Okay, so I'm going to use the molly pen real quick. Just do it like this. How's that look without the uh, wand select? Uh, that's pretty decent. Yeah, okay, let's go with this. Then, hey, like, no, no, not not on the eyes. That being said, I do want to go back in here real quick. Maybe with like something, maybe like with the same color as like the dark parts here, and then just very quickly, let's turn this around. No, it needs to lean more towards red. More saturated, too. Yeah, like that. And like this. Then over here. Hmm. Maybe with like a something like brighter red towards a yeah, like this. There we go. Whew. Okay, that should be the shading done. I did want to do real quick. <laughs> I, I keep like I keep stalling. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think I think this might be the last one. Hang on. It's fine to stall every now and again, though. If it's for a good cause, then there's no harm in stalling. I think I think you'll find that this will be a good idea. Alright. Actually, let's copy and paste this layer just in case. Really bulk up the brush size.
There we go. Mm, no, not quite. I don't know. I might be onto nothing here, but I want to try. Right? I want to. I want to give it the shot. Okay. I might also change the color of the sparks here. Hang on, what if I just like change the What if I put it behind him, actually? Hang on. Huh. You know, I'm a kind of a fan of that. I actually really like how that looks. All right, hang on. I'll duplicate the background again. And I'm going to do a little bit of trickery with it. I'm going to get a little goofy with it. I'm merge into a single layer. And, hmm, I wish I could make a brush size bigger than 2,000, but I think this will also work for our purposes. All right, so what we want to do is we want to move this kind of like focal point right here. Can I actually do this with like the freeform trans with like the mesh transform? Hang on. Uh, transform, mesh transformation. Uh... Yes, okay. Now see we're on to something. Okay, I I messed up right there. I uh kind of exited out of the transformation. Let me try that again. We were on to something though. We were on to something good. Need to squash and stretch some of these other parts, but I think we can swing it. I bet I can hammer out some of these parts of the uh, liquify tool too. Hang on. Oh, that's going to take a while to transform, huh? 
The bar keep, the loading bar keeps going and going and shows no signs of stopping. Did I save my work before this? Ah oh, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. There we go. Any minute, no. Any minute. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the BRB screen real quick. I'll, I gotta go check on something. <laughs> And we're back. Unfortunately, Clip Studio Paint isn't just yet. Feels weird when all I've got to do is kind of is to do is like twiddle my thumbs. Oh, it's done. Let's go. And I immediately <laughs> accidentally press where I'm not supposed to. My B. Okay, so we're going to shrink this so that we can only, so we only stretch this part here. There we go. That's, that's very inconspicuous. I, we, we'll need to blur parts of it too, on second thought. But for the time being, our priority is to kind of like ensure that these circular lines make make a full loop. Just very carefully hammering out this dent here. And with a push tool, it'll be easier. Yeah, just a little bit. Anyway, now we're going to have to blur this part out here. To kind of get it, get it homogenous with the effect it had before. Can I just like cheat this and just make the finish the darn circle myself? I think I can. Yeah, I totally can. No, but that doesn't look quite right. Urgh. All right, hang on. I got an idea. I feel like we're entering desperate measures territory, which is never a good place to be in. How did the original one look? Like, I need to... Hmm. Let me just try this again. Or just select the layers. Uh, filter. Distort. Okay, here we go. Convert to panorama. 
fish eye lens. Okay, I think that this will help a little bit. Okay, radius, increase that. Shape. Oh. If I reduce the radius. Layer. Is there like a spherize layer filter? Hang on. Pinch. Oh, me, that's it. Hmm. Like putting it on the belt feels like the most natural idea, but I fear I fear that that's going to do something unintended. On the other hand, this does actually free up some of our um Tech, you know, this does free up a little bit of our of the techniques that I was hoping to use originally. Anyway, Okay, I think I understand what I need to do now. Let's see here. I'm gonna need to cheat this a little bit. No. Okay. I'm just going to like give up is a bit of a strong word, but maybe call it hmm. How did that other version look? No, that's no good. Uh, I mean, could be no, no, that's no good. Hmm. Curved surface. Oh, I think this might be the one that I was looking for. Hang on. Cylinder? Hmm. Okay, we are very close to getting what we need. What did I just do? 
Oh, I see. Anyway, as I was saying, we're very close to getting what we need. We just need to repeat these, this process a couple more times. Okay, the stored curved surface. And then little by little, we'll keep like distorting this curved surface until eventually we can just kind of like palm the whole thing and shift it over to where the belt is. Actually, I might be able to do that now. Hang on. What about the mesh transformation? Do, do we still have that on? Is that still viable? No, not quite. All right. Curved surface it is. Let's try let's keep doing that. I am using the wrong tool. We need to trim this part down here. Okay, expand that again. Down, shift all this down here. Come on, work with me. Screw it, I'm keeping the original background. This isn't worth it. I'm done. <laughs> Original background, but maybe a little bit bigger, so I can, I can recenter it. Yeah, okay, there we go. Federal issue just to do one simple thing, I swear. <laughs> But I got there. I did it. I am the winner. <laughs> Yeehaw. Okay, I'm going to add additional like white streaks to this red thing because I feel like that's what it's missing. Yeah, okay, hang on. Okay, is red a little too much? No, I feel like that helps to kind of like focus everything. All right. We are so back. All right, all right, all right. So now here's what we do. Oy, yes, Mio. Oh, but that actually looks really cool too. Hold on. Oh man, this is going to be a dilemma. <laughs> I don't know which one looks better. Oh wait, actually, no, never mind. This one looks the looks the best. I've decided. Another another problem easily solved by Pablo Riza. 
All right, let's get it. Okay, so here's that, how what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the to the um, tonal correction. We're gonna go to the gradient maps. We're gonna figure out a nice, colorful one that we can apply to this. Hang on, wasn't there like a like like a therm? Oh wow, that is violently pink. I like it, but maybe not what we're looking for. Okay, hello. Choices, choices. I did recently download a buttload of gradients from this other person. But I do think I'm going to gravitate to the to this kind of like caramel one. Well, it, the name of it is called Caramel. I don't think this looks like Caramel at all. At all. This one looks kind of cool. I feel like this is like what the in inside of an aquarium would look like. Okay. Then gonna do a similar treatment on old Takashi Hongo over here. Let's see. I wanna do something that'll help him stick out a lot. Yeah, like maybe this kind of like purplish. Hang on, sky. Because, I mean, this also helps them stick out quite a bit. Nah, I, th I think like the one that we were on earlier. Hang on. We had one around here. I don't think it was this one. Yeah, this one, I think. Let's see. Let's see this one. I'm kind of liking this one, honestly. Let's keep seeing which ones are available. I like how how just like green this one is, honestly. Like it's a nice change of pace. What about okay, this with the original? Mm, maybe not. Okay, maybe like this, and then we like do a li just the slightest bit of like erasing on the eye so that like it looks more like the original, and on like the um, turbine too. Hmm. Yeah, because like with the originals, it's like now it's like too dark against the background, right? Giving it that kind of like bluer hue, I think. I think that one was with color. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've got a winner. Hmm. Maybe if I shift the hue of this a little bit. Bump up the saturation a bit. Hmm. 
Yeah, I, th- I think this is kind of what's going to be. I think this is about as much as I can do with it. All right, time to put my signature on this bad boy, and we'll clock out for the day. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, thank you to everybody who came by the stream. Uh, thank you for keeping me company, and I always appreciate everybody who stops by. Uh, who all is streaming? Oh, Corky's streaming Persona. All right, let's go say hi. All right, where's the fr- where's the creator dashboard? I've got a button to push. Yeah, take care of yourselves. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you all tomorrow for some more work on the comic that I've been doing. All right. See you later. Bye.